I've been using ChatGPT since it launched and have discovered ways of communicating with it that do give better responses. So I'll share with you the tips and tricks I use with ChatGPT that can help to take your prompts to the next level with better outputs. Most of these can be used on the free tier, while a few that I show you are enhanced when using ChatGPT+. Let's get started. For this first one, targeting your query to who is reading the response can drastically change the vocabulary used and the complexity of the output. For example, if I wanted to know how Bluetooth works but had very little technical knowledge and wanted it to explain it to me as if I'm a child, I would query, explain how Bluetooth works to a 12-year-old. Here's an example not targeting an audience. Explain how Bluetooth works. The response is more of a generic answer tailored towards a technical expert that for some may be difficult to comprehend. Let's now enter a prompt geared towards a targeted audience. Explain how Bluetooth works to a 12 year old. As you can see, making the small change tailored for a person reading it does make it more useful in context than the generic answer not geared towards a targeted audience. So I'd recommend trying this out yourself, entering a prompt both ways for the queries you have, not targeting a specific audience, and another way specifying a targeted audience. When doing research of any kind, importing files to have ChatGPT analyze them is very useful to extract and summarize the key points and to help make complex language more simplified, especially with legal and medical research documents. As you can see, I've already attached a PDF. If you don't know how to attach a file or image, you would select the plus, then add photos and files. Then you would search your device for what you're looking for. A prompt you might want to try with this is I've attached a PDF. Simplifying the language, do a summary of the key points, and highlight important insights. It does a good job of showing the case overview on this one, what the company is being accused of, and some key legal arguments, and important insights. So this takeaway saves a lot of time, especially with this document that was 62 pages long. The question down here is pretty good. Would you like this summarized even more simply, perhaps as a bullet point brief or a visual chart? I've never done the visual chart, so let's try that. Well, that was interesting. Changing the default neutral tone and writing style of ChatGPT can be very useful in creative projects to get outputs that can be more interesting. For example, in the writing style of Stephen King, stories written that are similar to Shakespeare or marketing copy that sounds like Nike. A good way to start the prompt is, imagine you are, here's a quick example. Imagine you are the author, Mark Twain, write a New Year's party invitation at an auditorium. Doing this, instead of getting basic generic responses, you get a response that is more interesting and engaging. This one surprised me. It's very humorous. A common mistake people make when generating images is they describe what they want instead of telling what they want, like a director of a movie or TV show. It's important to include the style, for example, watercolor, photorealistic, or a style of a particular artist. It can also help to add the lighting and perspective. Image generation is now integrated into conversations for Plus users by selecting Create Image. Here's an example. Create an image. Reimagining Da Vinci's Mona Lisa in a cyberpunk setting. With Mona Lisa as a humanoid robot against a backdrop of a futuristic city.
Well, that turned out pretty cool. Just remember a good way to do this. Just remember when entering prompts to generate images, it's best to enter them like you're a director with specific instructions, and that will help you to generate better images. Depending on your prompt, sometimes the responses can be quite lengthy. If you wanted to get to the point, you can set boundaries for the output by prompting, as an example, exactly four paragraphs or under 75 words. Here's an example of these constraints in action. Provide a concise explanation of quantum computing in exactly three paragraphs, keeping each paragraph less than 75 words. Doing this can give you output that is more focused and concise without details that are unnecessary. ChatGPT is great for organizing unsorted lists alphabetically and by priority, category, and any other way that you want. This can save hours of time for when working with inventory lists or any other kind of list that you need organized. Here's a simple example. Sort this list of grocery items alphabetically and put them in groups by food category. And I'll put the food categories in parentheses, vegetables, fruits, proteins, etc. followed by a colon. Now I'll copy and paste the list with huge lists. This can be a game changer. You'll want to be specific in your prompt using words like alphabetically, category, formatting, etc. Having your writing evaluated in chat GPT from various perspectives can be useful to make you a better writer. From a marketing perspective or from a professor's perspective are a couple examples. I've already attached a research paper I did back in college regarding the effects of technology on distracted driving. Here's the prompt for this one. I've attached a document of my writing. Provide feedback from the perspective of a university professor. The feedback will give advice on writing style and structure with ways to improve writing. It will also check for content accuracy. You can also use ChatGPT to do web searches just like you would with a traditional search engine. Plus users get the added benefit of using web search in real time. To do a search, click on search, then type the search query like you normally would. The great thing about searching on here is that there are no sponsored links or other crap cluttering up the page. Thanks for watching. If this video was useful for you, give it a thumbs up and share it with others. If you have any tips and tricks when using ChatGPT, let us know about them in the comments. And if you're new to our channel and haven't done so already, subscribe and click the bell to not miss out on our latest tutorials for the various AI tools and other tech-related stuff here on Brett in Tech.